50 free megs of spectrum and the other gets zero without having to prove anything at all as far as a public disclosure of actual network usage on the free spectrum they're already transmitting on like what's up with these government handouts man well, i mean what is yeah. going on like what's what's up yeah i completely agree with b i just want to add it shouldn't be at&t in the first place at&t should not be the first responder network with all the stuff that's been happening to them lately I'm I'm gonna have to say it should have gone Verizon contract. Yeah, they got a contract, but uh, you know what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to unsign it? Are we supposed to go back okay. with go back with the Infinity Stones and snap fingers and create alternative universes? So, so let me let me backtrack really quick. Let me backtrack really quick. How long? Chacha, what was the point? question about uh, that? I apologize. I was in a bad coverage area. Um, mm -hmm. What was the, the original question? No, no, no. I'm on the T-Mobile network right now, actually. Yeah. The, so I, the way I framed it was I did the history. AT&T played it close. 80 megahertz right. of N77 and the C-band frequency 3700. Right. They shared the first 100 megahertz with Verizon, the A block. Verizon was kind enough to do that, to give them access to something. AT&T paid the cost. Right. And then they went ahead and they played cute cut it close in my opinion, but went 40 megahertz of DOD. Everything clears up with the C-band. You got mm -hmm. 80 and 40 with the exception of Dallas, which is 140. Right. You don't think that some of those interplayings had anything to do with the fact that they knew that this was in the pipeline. And the secondary piece to this is, do we have proof or evidence that a 10 by 10 slice is not enough and 50 megahertz of 4.9 is required to support the first responders and if that's the case and they need more mid-band for first responders <laughs> did it all have to go to at&t okay 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 so realistically speaking is 10 by 10 enough for a low band channel we've been seeing that t-mobile has uh been able to experiment on more than 10 by 10 right nationwide on average i feel like they're 15 by 15 on n71 and um, more, right, right, not, right exactly through, you know columbia capital right. dish through, they've experimented with right. larger lots yes right exactly that's how you're able to have a cell site that's like 30 miles away and it's blasting n71 <laughs> and you're still able to get you know 15 10 mbps carlos on his channel has shown that multiple times right tyrone went to albuquerque same situation right n71 was holding up with a cell site that was in timbuktu is 10 by 10 enough for low band you know it's uh if it was a standalone situation i don't think it would be enough right um if you augment that with a larger channel for your data requests then it could be right but keeping this keep this also in I did the math on this. 4.9 gigahertz is about 80% the um, distance, like the, the projection of the signal is about 80% of a 3.7 or the regular C-band. So what that means is that if your regular C-band is able to go three miles, right, in this scenario, then it will only be able to do up to 80% the 4.9. It's not bad, but it's just not the same like for like. So was this 4.9 a part of the 2017 contract? As far as we know, no. Okay. No. And then why did it go to AT&T? <clears throat> you, you know, you guys got to think about what AT&T is doing with fiber, right? They're putting massive, massive amounts of fiber into the ground. Capital. And like I said before, right, like I said before, I'm going to say it again, they know how to play the long game. They've been doing it, and they're eating Verizon's lunch. Okay? <laughs> so, Excuse me? <laughs> In what way? In what way? In what way? <laughs> In what I way? love it. Yo. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love it too. Let's talk about it. In what way? <laughs> more, more, more fiber into the ground. Nah, okay. no. prove, 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 prove that out. 
Please, please provide a source. If, if we want no, to talk about Please, 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 please provide Verizon. Please provide us, Verizon please pro has more fiber miles than AT&T does nationwide. Let's keep that. Let's keep it real. Yeah, oh. no. Hey, hey, look, man, if, we, if we're going to talk, let's at least be rooted in, in, in actual data that can be proven out. I mean, I understand if, I, if you want to talk about addresses past. Yes, that's true. But not for long. I mean, there's just been a purchase that's been made. Nobody ever takes into account the one fiber initiative that Verizon already has been working on and been building out for seven years plus and counting. And files is continuing to expand as well. So that lead is about to vanish very, very soon. What else you got? As far as wireless is concerned, it's not even it's not even close. It's not even close. But Verizon dominates AT and T from a wireless standpoint, and that's without government handouts. What else you got? It it'll be when they get the when they get the four nine nine up in the air, right? Their mid band is going to be absolutely amazing. What do you think of that carrier amazing. aggregation and, and stuff, I, cool. Yeah, and it's like I I believe it's gonna it's gonna like if they do the you know God you know God forbid they do the they do the configs right, but um i think it's going to be um a very high capacitive network and i think it's going to surpass uh verizon you can here you can mark me down i said it so there the won't main band network is going to pass verizon won't happen it won't it's happen. already happening in Just dallas watch. what are you talking about verizon doesn't have the please, site density please as AT &T that with, or t-mobile please substantiate go, that with uh with, with, with go to evidence. go to any website Go to okay, I go to I go to I go to rootmetrics.com. Uh, go to go, go to any website. Okay, rootmetrics. And I'm if going there you right were now. Go to all the cell sites <laughs> for Dallas as an example, right? Team uh, Verizon just can't compete there. They can't. Hmm. They don't how have many the site Dallas's, density. Moose, how many Dallas's are there? Well, like in that case where they're just that much better than Verizon, how many of those exist? Well, One. No, Miami is also. Moves. There are a lot more uh, Miami and Wisconsin's out there. There are a lot more areas where AT and T is uh, ooh, not so good. Yeah, I think you've got you've got your your tunnel vision going pretty hard there. I mean, I would expect AT and T to outperform everyone where their headquarters is. <laughs> like, let's yeah, I mean, be like like Paul Spade is made, man. If I go to Basking Ridge. Do I expect anybody to beat out Verizon in any way, shape, or form, Moose? Say that one. Say that one again, bro. You got to get off that T-Mobile line. Just stop. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's so it's gonna gonna be rough, man. Get on the Wi-Fi. Do something else with that phone. No, AT, AT, AT and T hasn't dominated the city of Dallas, Texas, since the first half of 2015. That was almost 10 years ago. 